Joe Rowling lays out such a kind of sure roadmap. You know, there's what's right and what's wrong. You know what he wears, sort of. You know what his hair is like. You are... Uh, you're told that he never really raises his voice above... He doesn't really shout um, that much. Um, so there are rules to play, and once you live inside those rules, and then you, and, you know, you're as focused as he is, um, in, in many ways it plays itself, because the situations are so strong, and the her grasp of her narrative is so kind of ironclad um, that it's not so much as what you choose to do as, as, as not disobeying it, I think. I'm in the same position as everybody else. You know, I would read the books as they came out and think, oh, right, OK, this is what happens now, is it? Fine. But you always knew there was an agenda. It was a question of what was that agenda going to turn out to be. That meant it's somebody who's very concentrated. You know that he lives a solitary kind of existence. You're not quite sure what the details of that are. But, um, you know, he doesn't have much of a social life. <laughs> and he's only got one set of clothes, clearly, which last quite well. It's been a complete privilege really to be part of this you know, and that is what we all are is part of this enormous brave undertaking of Joe's at the beginning and then uh, you know all the Davids and all the directors and and Warner Brothers to actually sort of dare to do it you know that your eyeline has shifted year by year because I started looking at them like this and then I gradually I'm shrinking or they're growing. But you're not really aware of it until you look back across the whole span of time because what difference is there between 13 and 14 or 15 and 16? You don't really notice that. Uh, you know that they've got a little bit taller since a year ago and their voices changed a bit. But it, it isn't really until you get the shock horror of seeing a clip from uh, the first film that you realise how vulnerable and small these people were. And now I'm looking at a situation where, certainly with Emma off at university and Dan dancing his way through a Broadway show eight times a week, you know, it's like the world has shifted. You know, as a drama student or as a schoolboy, I was sitting up in the cheap seats watching Maggie Smith and Michael Gambit at the National Theatre. So uh, to then find yourself working with them and them becoming friends. And, of course, Michael has the wickedest sense of humour and Maggie is one of the wittiest people alive. I mean, I, I only regret that I didn't have a tape recorder or a notebook, or could do shorthand, because priceless. That's why there's la it's usually me laughing, because you can't compete with those two. <laughs>